Start recording. All right, so again, welcome to Seabug. Here's what we're doing today. First off, uh, we introduced ourselves, and here's the itinerary. Uh, we're going to look at some new builds, and also we have some gaffer swag. So we got a nice present from our sponsor, which is Puget Systems. They are a computer company. They make stuff that's really dope. Um, and specifically, you can get stuff that is tailor-made for your computer needs, especially if you're doing hardcore stuff like 3D. So you can actually say, well, what do I need to do? I make content stuff. They don't have a Blender one, but it's probably going to be a very similar rig to if you need a Maya computer. Or if you're more on the game side, oftentimes you might want to do something that's Adobe related or stuff like that. But also you can get stuff that's like specifically for Edgesoft PhotoScan. That's probably what I would get. Um, very cool stuff. Um, I know I heard from other user groups uh, who bought this that like it's the best computer they ever bought. Um, so that's that. So yeah, we have Gaffer. Uh, thanks to them, I bought eight licenses of the Gaffer, which is a really great Blender plugin for lighting and effects. And so I can distribute that to you guys, Whee! and uh, we will uh, go over how to use it a little bit. And then lastly, I've been doing some perspective experiments, so I'll show you some of that. So yeah. First off, what's the first cool new Blender thing? The Shadow Catcher. So if you're ever curious about this, you can go to graphicall.com, dot org. Yep. And this is a place where you can get very fresh, straight out of the oven Blender builds. So this one was two days ago. There's the Cycles Denoising one. And there are several that are really, really exciting right now. And so I wanted to show you some of them. This is like a shadow catcher for cycles. Is there a version that was different for the original Blender engine? Uh, no. Uh, well, actually, I think with the original Blender engine, uh, it was possible to set it up through materials, or uh, I think through the object. Actually, let's open yeah, it up. Shadow and shadow only. Yeah. Um, so the issue is that it's one of those things where Cycles didn't have the structure to do it, I think, because Cycles was handling stuff entirely on the material and renderer side. Mm -hmm. And that was a feature that had to be on like the object side. It had to be a, a thing that you clicked on the object where you said, uh, break all the rules of physical reality in Cycles for this one object. And so that's why they couldn't do it through a Cycles material. So if you look, this is the Cycles Shadow Catcher build. I think if you scroll down, it's right here on Graphical. Let's just make a quick, very simple cycle scene. Step one, delete your cube. Now let's add a cube. Let's make it nice and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's fine for the recording if you guys. Better. So after deleting your cube, you add another cube, and I always like to add a sphere as well. And we can throw some simple materials on these. Let's make this one a nice reddish metal. Oh wait, we have to make it in cycles. Switch your renderer to cycles is this tab up here. And we'll say use nodes. This one will be a glossy. This one will be a diffuse. Uh, that color. And let's of course add a monkey. And we'll make this one, I don't know. Green. What? Green. Yeah. Glass. Green glass. Wow. A little green fairy. Oh, look, a perfect cycle scene. <laughs> so we can see we have this default light. Let's actually make it a sun. I like suns. Finally, I have one light. <coughs> 
Eh, yeah, let's keep it as a point. I like seeing this as a point because we can see how there's a fall off and you can see this edge where this object is. Now this is where the shadow catcher is tricky. You might uh, have an initial instinct that you would go into nodes and apply it as material, but instead it ends up being oh, am I crashing? It ends up being in the object properties. So for this plane, I'm going to add another material and let's go to the object tab and under cycle settings way down here at the bottom there's now a box that says shadow catcher so you'll notice that now this plane has disappeared just to show you an on off here's as a shadow catcher material Here's without. Suddenly that's right there. So if you need just really fast uh, shadows that help ground your object, this is super cool. And it's also exceptionally nice for HDR stuff. So if I wanted to add in a background that was an image-based light, there's almost certainly one in my downloads folder. I'm going to add a texture, environment texture. I can click open. This looks like an HDR. Which one do you want? Obviously it's going to be the one that's the biggest file size. And I don't know if this one was shot correctly or not. But so right now you can see uh, you would previously try and do things like turn this into like a, you know, holdout and transparent material. And it was just awful trying to get this plane to function as a shadow catcher. Now I just turn on shadow catcher. And look, we have these objects that are, are sitting on this flat ground, right? Which is totally flat. Uh, so you can see some problems still exist. Namely, there actually is material properties that are on this plane that still matter. So, namely, they still get reflections off of this plane. So, what would be the ideal scenario for using this shadow catcher and have it affect the reflections? When you shoot this, you should also get a shot straight down of this stuff and maybe set that as your background. In fact, there might be a way we can do this on the fly. I'm going to unwrap this and over here switch to the image editor. If you don't know how to switch to a given layout, the trick is to just hit every button at once. Shift and then every F button. So I can go something like that. And in a perfect world you would actually like do all sorts of fancy stuff like photogrammetry scan this ground and then like you have a mesh that looks like that and you can get way more complex than you need but now at the very least we have something that's pretty close so like let's make this cube a shiny material instead oh actually we need to say for this plane I'm going to change it to actually be a texture I should do it over here. add input texture image texture input oh it defaults to UV it does now right. so let's make this actually I, I hope so <coughs> I think it does it used to not and never as sharp as I used to be neither. but so you can see by doing so we hopefully have something that yeah. kind of represents that color on the ground but like it's not perfect here let's actually make this object the same material because this will reflect the ground a little better
Could you make it transparent, Shadow Capture? Like, what would happen if you made the... Uh, I don't know, let's see. So if you have no material on, you're black. Uh, and back in the day when people were trying to figure this out on the fly to like force it into cycles before we had the shadow catcher, there were some pretty insane setups of like um, using the reverse of the camera ray to map the environment, like the HDR onto the bottom of it and stuff like that. Transparent. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, but now you don't have the shadows. So it's too transparent. So if you if you use an in-camera ray to get the shadow back. What do I want? Oh yeah, that'd be good. Just do just mix it between it. Mix shader. We're gonna mix this with this. Feel free to everyone shout out the answer as I go. Uh, yeah. Light path. Light path. See? We're a team. <laughs> this camera ray. Hey! Look at that. Although it's not getting the reflection back from the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's still better than having this freaking edge off in the distance. You know? Like, we're. It's an improvement. <laughs> and if you need something super fast, this is awesome. And also, if you want to do, like, the product rendering stuff, like, let's say you took all this HDR stuff out. You can still now very easily get that like lovely product shot of like the infinite um, background. I think in photography they call that an infinity screen or an infinity wall. An infinity wall gives you like ten different things. Yeah. So like normally, if you want the infinity wall look, you would basically have to build this whole setup. We can do it much easier in 3D. But so this is where you would shoot your product and it looks like there's no edge. So now you know what an infinity wall is. There's other terms for it too. Oh yeah, by the way, there's donuts. If anyone wants donuts. So, shadow catcher, pretty cool, right? Let's go to the next cool new build. Actually, should I save this? Save it to the desktop. Save it to the desktop. <laughs> Just a real useful naming convention. ASDF final. So what else is up here? Blender 2.8! So Blender 2.8 is doing some really insane stuff. Uh, I feel like it was just yesterday that they were saying at the Blender Institute they were going to hold off on giant super builds for a while, and now they're doing a giant super build, which I love because you know it can be very scary that the UI that you are very comfortable with and friendly with is actually having tons of stuff torn out and replaced. Uh, but embrace the future, just do it. So this is 2.8, and if you guys want, you should. Uh, check out the documentation on 2.8. So, did that one just pull up graphic model? Yes. I noticed with that one, I can't see any of the, um, the meshes. Like your cube in there is invisible. Oh, uh, I think I figured out. Like, if you switch to like render view, it'll show it. Yeah, um, there's a reason for that. Uh, okay. Uh, well, which I will go into. And it's like the main change that they're doing right now. So, if you look up 2.8. We're going to do 2.8. I mean, 2.8. 2.9. Today in Seabug, how to use a keyboard. And if you look through the wiki, they talk about all the stuff and sort of their uh, idea for it, of uh, what they are doing. So the big, big change is the U um, how they're drawing the window draw, the 3D viewport. The viewport, that's the term. <laughs> So, if you notice, if you go up to the renders, there's several brand new renderers. We have the Blender Render Classic, 
Recycles vendor. We're used to that. And we have Clay and Eevee, which are two new scary ones. Oh, <coughs> yeah. They're going to get sued. So basically the idea of 2.8, uh, I mean, you can go into the viewport tab. Uh, they talk about it a little bit. But basically the idea was that, you know, if you had over here the blender's render, Blender renderer, you would have to have this big thing that said, okay, here's your UI, and here's the GL, and here's like the object relations. And then on top of that, matcap. And over here on cycles, viewport, cycles, for cycles, oh, and then also wireframe, maybe. You would do a lot of this same stuff over, like um, UI, um, cycles, uh, mat caps, uh, screen space occlusion. And you can Im imagine the problem here, which is each of these is doing these separate, and it's like a big pile. And so the new change is that instead of doing this, this is such a terrible explanation. Um, the new change is the idea that instead, over here, you have nothing. <laughs> you just create a new file. <laughs> oh, it changed my layout. You know, let's just open it again. <laughs> This is very uh, this is very raw stuff. Do not like take this into work and start using it in production. Uh, but so the new idea is that instead, over here you draw the wireframe, and over here you draw uh, the object relationships. So like parenting and stuff. Stuff. Over here you draw your screen space ambient occlusion, right? Over here, as a separate thing, you have your classic OpenGL stuff. And they're ripping out old OpenGL and they're switching to the brand new fancy OpenGL, which I can't speak to more except that it's going to be better and you probably need a new computer. And then over here, you have cycles. And what's nice about this? Well, now you can have multiple kinds of renderers that just take any given chunk of these and build their own new chunk of what is finally drawn onto this viewport. In fact, the best part is that you can have a cycles render that has the object relationships, the wireframe, the ambient occlusion, the OpenGL as a separate thing, or mat caps, into this nice super render. I'm going to get rid of this grease pencil stroke. Can you take out first yeah, so just let's actually go into the clay render, and you're instantly going to see this, which is this is, you know, again, like the bare bones start to this project. Uh, now we can see this cube, and it's arguably a little better looking than previous versions of Blender. And as they add more stuff, they're going to add other things. The clay renderer is designed to give you instant feedback on just geometry and also let you assign different mat caps per object, which means that if you just care about getting your physical forms down and your modeling down, you can get into it much faster. Now, on top of that, we can have the cycles renderer, which look at this. We have an object selected, and we can see it in cycles. So let's actually open, this will probably crash. Uh, let's open that obviously perfectly named file. And look at that, do you see the difference? We can select objects in cycles now. Uh, what if we parent this? <laughs> we can see parent relationships. What if we add some bones? All right, maybe we can't see bones. 
Yeah. Well, we can, but what it is is um. X-ray's not on. Yeah. So now we can go into this, and we can say, how do we draw this? Up, I don't down, know. down. Object. No, no, go back to where you were. To the right. Uh, X-ray. No, I think it is under. I think it is under object. Yeah. I think the X-ray might not work yet. Alright. So it's getting there though. But you can see your bones on your cycles render so far. Which is kinda cool, right? It's also kinda trippy because it's updating not at the same pace. Yeah, so what yeah, so that's what's really interesting. The wireframe and the objects and like the outlines. That all draws really, really fast. That's been around for, you know, years, like, you know, two decades in Blender or something now. The cycles refreshes. But because these are rendered separately and then Lego blocked together, you can have just what's going to be the best experience ever in the viewport coming up. <clears throat> There's another renderer that's been added, and this renderer is for, it's kind of targeting the video game or real-time <coughs> graphics world. But it's the EV renderer. And what the EV renderer does, I am sorry, but I do not have a demo file handy for this. But what it has done is it's trying to do PBR in Blender. So if you are unfamiliar with PBR, that's good. You should drink that in here. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, physically based rendering. So, Marmoset is an example PBR renderer for Unity. And the idea is that it's kind of like Cycles in that it assumes there's only a certain amount of things that real world materials ever do. They're either reflective or not. They're either transparent or not. They're either textured or not. And if you only account for those things, then it's very easy to chop up and make shaders that are much faster uh, because you only ever account for these three things and instead of having to render for each new material you just render this one physically based reality and then staple the small chunk of it to each shader so the idea is that I'm going to find something on the textures Yeah, sure, we'll go with it. So the idea is that instead of the old paradigm for how you make textures for your render, previously, like older generations, it was first you would have a diffuse, and then they started adding things like uh, reflection maps or specular maps, and I would say, oh, make it shiny in this one spot. Normal maps change things so that you could say, oh, change when it, uh, the render comes in, use this normal to say that the light dif uh, direction is coming from the left or the right of this individual polygon. And then normally, instead of this roughness and specular, what you would have is uh, just like specular. And so by this roughness map, it changes like the quality of the surface. And the albedo is what we used to call diffuse. And so when you jam all those together, you get pretty realistic results that happen in real time. Again, I am so sorry that I do not have a demo file for this. But in theory, we can just... Also, sometimes some of the, there's two different types of PBR shaders. Uh -huh. Sometimes you'll find a one that uses a, what's called a metalness. Yes. Instead of a spec, which is a little bit different. Or they're not actually a one-to-one -one thing. It just seems to be consistent. Yeah, and like, there's actually, if you have old files, um, there's people who have done like conversion pipelines where you can just jam an old uh, Xbox 360 shader into it and it dumps out all the maps uh, remapped. Uh, yeah, so if something is either shiny or not, and if that metal is either really pure glossy or not, oh, uh, this is it. Yeah. Um, it's fancy science it's stuff. So, like, this is a perfect example of it. Like, this is where the gun is extra metal. Um, 
And there's a couple other fancy things that people do. So, for instance, uh, I think uh, height maps and occlusion maps are affected in this as well. You can use a occlusion map to say, you can use a, an occlusion map plus a height map to get uh, what's called parallax. And so it makes things look more 3D or not. Uh. I don't know if parallax. Zuri, I was wondering, is that parallax? Or that's is that actually like a mesh. That's actually a mesh. Yeah. So that like one, that one though is, uh, well, it's not super dramatic. That one's got some wizards over there. It's a uh, height map. Oh, cool. So this is like a perfect example of it, and this is like a hideous uh, attempt to do it. Make the renderer kind of ruin that. But so, this is in theory just a single polygon, oh, but cool. they're using a shader to say as you are not in the occlusion dark areas, make this pop out more, and so it sort of stretches the pixels, and it looks really really good for very few polygon hits. So. I don't know. Try deleting the material that I have in the middle one. Yeah, let's actually start a fresh scene. Oh, yeah. So let's switch right to the EV render. And let's try making a material in it. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea is that the shaders that pop out of it, um, first off, you can use this to visualize what you're going to see in Unreal and Unity. Uh, it's sort of following the, um, the sort of leader in the industry right now for this stuff, which is Substance. So if you've never played with Substance Designer or Painter, uh, Blender users, I think, actually can jump into it very fast because it's a node-based world. And uh, the idea is you use nodes and you create this stuff. This actually will, uh, Substance Designer uses math to generate, like, you combine a math-generated brick texture plus a math-generated Fresnel or um, Boronoi texture. And as a result, when it spits out the final code, it doesn't actually give you a texture. It gives you a data file that has the math to assemble that. So then in the 3D world, it uses that to create the textures on the fly, and as a result, it's very low hit, because you're not actually saving any pixels. Um, the new EV render is really trying to follow this stuff. So if you've ever used Substance, you're going to be able to spit your Substance materials out and hook them up into Blender. And Substance Painter is also really good. There's a couple other options out there that do similar stuff. There's um, Mari. Mari is by the Foundry. And it's more targeted towards, I think, the cinema world. But same idea of trying to generate fancy stuff very fast. Might be a YouTube preview. Hi there, this is Carl Orwin with another Blendu tutorial. Uh, this is of uh, occlusion pattern generate diffuse light. Not the but eventually it's going to be cool. Um, and it's something that if you are in the video game world, this is 
kind of where everything has been going lately. Uh, Unity and Unreal are both heavily invested in this kind of pipeline. And so this is Blender getting on board. And it's pretty well, neat. It seems mainly that this would be for uh, people who are like doing more uh, like AAA stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, yes, it's getting yeah. so fast and easy to make this stuff. And also, you know, I heard a great, uh, or there was some article by a guy who made an indie game, and he had uh, a lot of success in the early days before like um, there was too much competition. Um, and his new philosophy on how to make a game, if he was uh, for his next indie game, is just to raid the Unity <laughs> asset store and just buy pre-made stuff left and right and basically make nothing himself, <laughs> which is kind of I think takes the fun out of it. But yeah, uh, those guys. His, um, he works on Deepo's Slime Ranch, and his whole thing was, yeah, I can model rocks all day, or I can just buy them, retexture them, move some verts around, and be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's like five bucks, so and it's just save time. For simple assets, for simple assets, for complicated stuff, if you spend more time trying to figure oh out yeah. what to actually get to and do better. Sure. Yeah, yeah that's why I use the example of rocks, because, like, there's artists who make rocks for video games, like, and they kind of yeah. fast. And, you know, like, Goat Simulator was the classic a big success of this. It was actually um, for a game jam, and they made they just made the Unity yeah, Asset the Star. They had a hilarious and premise, and, and they kept yeah. doing it for the final release. You know, and I think it's kind of good because it actually supports a pretty good ecosystem. So let's say you wanted to make content, and you didn't give a shit about uh, sending something out into the world. You could just make video game characters all the all day long, with no plot behind them. Throw them on the Unity Asset Store and let other people figure out how to work it into a plot. Uh, so if you want to make content and you don't care about all the business aspects of it, that's a way that you can do that now. Uh, there's one other. There's a couple other things that are cool about this 2.8 build, by the way. And I keep having to like shut it and restart it because it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, the outliner is the big change, uh, the other big change other than the viewport. So one of the things you might notice in 2.8, right down here, the familiar safety of layers is gone. No. no. Actually, this is great uh, because, yeah, and I, I'm so glad I never got any good with layers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> layers are gone. What? So normally there would be a little bit, and like this you might be scared, but the instant I read about this, I was like, this is brilliant. Because it's a redundancy. They had layers down here, and they have this big thing that starts in every scene that is an organizer of stuff. So why not force the outliner to be your new organizer of stuff? So now instead of layers, you have collections up here. So previously this would be scene, and uh, I think scenes still are a way to do this. Well, let's say I I have a bunch of cubes, right? And I have some monkeys. And I have some rigs. Yeah, and that's kind of the cool thing about this is there's actually a lot more functionality that comes with this. So if you expand this, there's currently no right click to do things uh, except if you right click on stuff. Yeah, so I want to right click in the blank spot and add a new collection and they want to do it uh, down here. Shift and if you do this inside of here, maybe. Oh, Shift A expands. That's weird. But over here is the new collection button. So if I add a new collection, I can call this cubes. I can select all these cubes. That one too. And add this by right clicking and add to selection. And now, uh, it's in both of these at once. So if I turn off this collection, all my cubes are available, but nothing else is. And you can also use the mouse thing so you can't select them from like groups or Yeah. Uh, I like using the little bit more So Oscar, I'm so used to hitting the M key to move stuff around layers. Is there a fast way to set something collections? 
No, it's uh, this is like uh, you can see the bug list, and there's like a lot more bugs than features added so far. Uh, so, for instance, one thing I disliked is like, oh, what if I want to move this cube into this collection? My thought is like I should be able to drag and drop that, but also uh, I think like uh, maybe it's not. But when I was uh, playing with this last night, um, it was parenting a lot. So it's possible they already fixed this. Hard to find good parents nowadays. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe this is it. I don't know. Maybe it's not going to parent. <laughs> oh, so if you click on the, I, uh, on the icon, you can parent. And that's what I thought. Like, they want to not have this function. But I used to love parenting through drag and drop in Maya. And it was one of those things that when I first saw the outliner in Blender, uh, I got really frustrated with how little functionality I got through the outliner. Uh, later on, uh, when I went back to Maya, I really loved that. Uh, so I'm really kind of excited for the outliner getting more power, actually. Uh, you can also use this. So the other thing that's cool is, in theory, this is going to add hopefully some other function like Maya, such as um, switching the draw mo modes per collection. Uh, maybe setting the wireframe color through collections. So and is that in those groupings from the objects tab, or is it still in the uh, groupings? Groups aren't. I don't know, let's see. I think that you, so that's the other thing, is you can have this just be everything, and then you see scenes separate from collections, but where did I go? So you can still use the outliner's functionality to figure out these. So if you want it to feel like the old school outliner, you can go to all scenes. And then you see it by scene rather than by collection. Whereas if you go to master collection list, you can see it by collection. The other thing is they've added in a collection tab in the properties. And this changes your ability to do things. So this is what's really cool, I think, is we can have our cubes uh, collection. And I'm actually going to add another collection called monkeys. And again, like Maya's uh, render layers where you can add certain things, I'm going to right click. I'm going to have to be in add selected. So now I have a monkeys layer. Delete this one. So I have a monkeys layer, I have a cube layer. And what's cool is on this monkeys layer, I can set custom made mat caps. So I can add a hue shift. I can say these ones are green. And again, this is going to make it much easier to uh, like visibly see things. So, like if you have your characters, lo uh, like um, you have characters versus environments, it's actually it used, it's another one of those things that I always missed about Maya was being able to organize things visibly based on their draw uh, properties. So, for instance, on this cube layer, maybe I can change the edge strength. Make them glow less or more. I'm hoping they add in changing the wireframe colors through here. Is that um, wireframe mode they showed off at the Blender conference uh, available yet? Where it's got depth to the wireframe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. showed was that in wireframe mode, things that were like facing away from you and further back would be like shaded differently than wireframe parts that were up close, which is awesome for super complex wireframe scenes because the alternative is like everything's just the same color and you can't tell what the heck you're looking at. At least it's not camera. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not color different. 
That's colored differently because it's in a group. Yeah, you can change the color individually of these. You should be able to change the color individually. Yeah, where is that? Is that in materials? Uh, so that, that was my question. Under the object tab, did they remove the group uh, listing? No. Uh, no, I think uh, groups are still here. I saw it, yeah. That is what I had been using for the layer. Oh, where they do still have layer. Like, see, like, this is. This has a lot of polish still needed. So this one, for instance, is in a group, and in the objects tab, it still has that. So it's just a better way that's replacing layers of organizing stuff, I think. What else has changed? Uh, they're rewriting particles, and I don't know what that means. Currently, um, if you go to yeah, what I'm hoping is they finally add some of the more robust stuff like uh, per particle animation. Uh, well, that, well, that's the idea with particle modes. You should be able to do everything you ever wanted to do. Yeah. Everything nodes all. Nodes are literally can all go and blame on. <laughs> yeah, let's all go complain. Mm. So that can do that in also? Yeah, I, digging around, I haven't noticed any changes yet. I just know that they're ripping everything out and piecing it back together for particles so that you can well do fancy stuff. And yeah, the clay renderer is really cool, and how it's piecing renders together is really nice. So you'll always be able to see things. All right, let's talk about the gaffer. This is um, what you guys get for free today. Yeah. At least uh, eight of you. Yeah. First, first dibs goes to anyone who presents. So I'm going to open regular Blender and Blender Builds. So I'm going to open that dumb scene of mine. The Gaffer plugin is just a really nice UI uh, tool uh, that lets you organize your lights. So it's by a guy named Greg Zoll. He's really cool. Uh, let me see. I think this is in my downloads folder now. And Guffer. Guffer. Try that. It's often the zip. If you don't know what a gaffer is, um, it isn't a gaffer a person? It's a person who, um, yeah, it's, it's the guy who, like, moves lights around and stuff. Yeah. It's the guy who, like, handles a lot of this equipment uh, in the real world. But not the clamps, because that's the best boy, right? Yeah. The grip. And again, Greg's all. He's a really neat dude. He has a lot of HDRs out there and some of the best quality ones out there. Very so, yeah, I would highly recommend you check him out. Uh, so, I first off, guy to the, the answers emails. yeah. So, one of the big changes here, let's add a couple of different lights. Let's make this a uh, sun and we'll say, we'll call this uh, key. And over here, we'll call this uh, a rim. And over here, we'll call this a fill. It's going to be way too much light now. Now the gapper is going to add this little tab over here. And if you hit refresh, you'll notice that uh, we have a couple of cool things. 
You can first off turn nodes on for all your lamps. And let's actually hide this. Turn off uh, Shadow Kitchen. There we are. And what's cool about this is it lets you just organize all your lights at once. Uh, you can uh, turn off what they affect. <coughs> and if you have a world background, it lets you actually open up. Um, there's a way that you can set your HDR folder. So I'll open this up. So if you have thousands and thousands of HDRs, you can set a folder for that similar to how you can set a texture directory. So I'll just set this to, I think somewhere in there I have it. I think there's a way that you can uh, auto-generate thumbnails too. It might already be doing that in the background. And anyways, I just really enjoy this uh, plugin a lot because it means you don't have to grab this light. Previously, if you wanted to do this, especially with cycles not having wireframe draw, you would have to either in the outliner or something grab each individual light or if you don't have the outliner handy go back to object mode do this go into here there would be a lot of junk that you don't actually use and the other thing that's really cool is let's create a, like a fresh scene let's say we just have a spot one thing that's kinda cool is I forgot. All these like stray custom builds are making the plugin directory really mad at me. Right, there's Gaffer. Lighting Gaffer. So let's say you have a spot, right? You can take that and add to selection that cube and you can like auto aim it. So now this light is aimed directly on our cube. If you don't see your stuff, just refresh it. And if you tab into it, you can do things like change this. You can also switch to linear if you want. Okay. Linear light versus linear fall off. Very different, just so you know. And very quickly get a nice render that I think is a little easier. So if you do lots of lighting, this is a cool plugin. Uh, let's take a break and I will get you guys that plugin. <laughs> Everyone need a donut. <laughs>